So this is a demonstration on how to use uh, E's Engineering Equation Solver to uh, solve this problem out of your textbook. The idea is that there's a spring and there's three pressures, there's P1, P2, and P3. In this geometry, it's a circular geometry, so we've got area P1 acts on area A1, P2 acts on area A2, and P3 acts on this third area. It's a donut shape or an annular shape. And we want to figure out the deflection of the spring. And there's a spring constant. The force of the spring is equal to K times the spring's displacement. And if we sum up uh, P1 acting in the upward direction minus P2 minus I'm sorry, minus P2A2 minus P3A3, these, these two forces resulting from the pressures, we can then solve for the force of the spring, and by then uh, we could back out, by knowing the spring constant, we could back out its displacement. Here's the code that I wrote in Engineering Equation Solver to solve this problem. First, you'll see in blue comments, I use uh, curly braces just to describe what I'm doing with the code. You may or may not want to include it. Uh, and then in also in fees, I've put down comments for these different variables. Here I've defined P1, P2, and P3 uh, in the problem statement. It's given, and it's given to you in kilopascal. And we need to convert to Pascal to keep the units all together. So in doing so, I use this convert function where I said convert kilopascal to Pascal. And right above it, I did something similar for the, the spring constants given to you as 8 kilonewtons per centimeter, which are um, odd units. So I converted it uh, kilonewton per centimeter to newtons per meter. What's useful about this code is that I don't need to do any algebra, really. Here I've got my equation for the force of the spring. It's k times x, where x is the displacement that we're trying to solve for. I define the two diameters, eight, 8 and 3 centimeters, and here are my conversion factors. Here are my equations for the three areas. So pi over 4 d1 squared, for example, is the area of that circle, circle 1 uh, over which p1 is acting. And here's my force balance. I said in the comments the sum of forces must be 0 since it's a static problem, nothing's moving, so acceleration is zero. And then I've solved for the, the three forces, or simply the three pressures times the three areas. And then finally, the last bit of code, I want to know x in terms of centimeters, so I use this x uh, underscore cm. And then here's my conversion again. And incidentally, I could call this whatever I want. I'm not restricted uh, uh, by any means, but I use these uh, subscript notations just to make my life a little bit easier. And then once I've established all of these, I go up, uh, click here to variable information, variable info. And this dialog appears, and I've defined in this column, is the main column to be concerned with, I've defined for each of these variables the units that I'm expecting. For example, I expect P1 in terms of units of Pascal, P2 in terms of Pascal, these forces I've got in Newtons and all the areas, I expect them to be in meters squared. Once I've got all my units established, I can go ahead and click this calculator button, or I can press F2 as a hotkey. So I'll click Solve that calculator button, and here are the results of my calculations. It gives me all the different areas that I calculated in meters squared, and here is x in uh, x in meters and x in centimeters. The correct answer is negative. Uh, you know, it's displaced about 1.7 centimeters. And a big thing to take away from this is that it said no unit problems were detected. And this can be a real lifesaver if you uh, if you make a unit mistake, you might be off by three orders of magnitude. So, for example, let's say I forgot that these are in kilopascal, and I'm going to get rid of these convert functions. And without these functions, I'm using P1, P2, and P3 in kilopascal. And when I hit go, or when I hit calculate, what it's told me is that there's three potential unit problems detected. Now, of course, if I took 5,000 kilopascal and multiply it by square meters, I don't come up with newtons. So I check the units on these, and what it's saying is that the units uh, that I expect, I expected these to be in newtons. But here I'm saying P1A1, these are all off by three orders of magnitude. And it's because I forgot to convert from kilonewtons, or I'm sorry, kilopascal to pascal. So it's really nice in terms of unit uh, catching units, and you'll ca catch a lot of mistakes if you use this properly. And another feature, if you like, you can go to Windows and click Formatted Equations, or press F10 is the hotkey. And what it's showing me are all these formatted values with unit conversions built in, so I can check to make sure all my units are being converted properly. And then it does uh, little things, like it'll uh, format the equations or format the variables. Here's D subscript 1. It'll recognize uh, pi, so I can see my area 1 is pi over 4 D1 squared, the geometry for a circle. And it does a couple of other things, like include my comments along uh, each of the force balances. 
So again, two of the most useful things I think about this uh, are in this code is that it will iteratively solve. It'll recognize a variable that it doesn't know, and it will iterate and solve for that variable uh, numerically. And it does a real nice job of unit handling.